Hello everyone, this is That Yi Guy, here for another PoE guide, this time for 3.1 or for the Atlas. Now before I get started, I just want to say that I hope everyone's doing well and that you can all stay warm and relaxed during the holiday season. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about Berserker Righteous Fire. Now this build has been around for quite a while, so I'm not really breaking the meta. Uh, personally, I prefer builds that can do good damage, can tank incredibly well, and with the ball pack getting gutted to pieces, I immediately went to test several different characters and skills, and finally decided on Berserker Righteous Fire as the choice for me, at least for starting out as the first build in the new league. Now, this is the build I play a lot, as you can see from the footage. So I, out of all the builds I made for running Uber Lab, this is by far the most relaxing to play, allowing me to shield charge rapidly through the entire lab and get those, get those sweet loots at the end. Aside from being able to run through Uber Lab completely stress-free, this build can also go through Guardians, go through Shaper. I did run into problem in Uber Aziri, mostly because of the ball trio proving much more of a challenge uh, compared to everything else in the game for me. Uh, normal Aziri is a complete breeze. The extra fire resist allows you to simply stand in almost all of her skills and tank it without any difficulty. Alright, let's talk about items for this build. So for weapon, there's two clear choices above all else. One is Bright Beak. Uh, Bright Beak is a weapon that attacks really fast. And what that does for you is that it allows shield charge to fire off very rapidly, which is going to help you a lot. And since you don't need spell damage, uh, there isn't that many weapons that helps your damage output significantly. So Bright Beak attack, damage, uh, attack speed is going to help a ton, and the resist also helps a ton in terms of gearing. Um, another choice, once you have a lot of currency, or once it gets to later in the league, is Doriani's Catalyst. And because you get it you know, from Aziri, uh, it's going to be very scarce early in the league. So Bright Beak will serve you really well, well into late game. So it's only when you start running into like super high level content, level tier 15 or above maps, when you start wanting more DPS, and that's when the Catalyst becomes more and more useful. And as soon as you're able to afford one, I say go for it, if it's within your budget. Um, now for the shield, there's Rise of the Phoenix and Cephal's Frame. Now both of these will uh, give you enough resist to sustain. So I know you're shocked right now because it looks like I have somehow acquired the new Rise of the Phoenix to show you. But if you zoom in really close, you can tell that I actually did it in MS Paint. So I mean it's very subtle like really subtle but like you can see it if you look for it but um eight percent was the old version now it is at five percent so the three percent maximum fire resist hit um while it does not look like a lot the way it's calculated it does make degen from righteous fire hit you much harder so some people were actually worried when the patch was first announced that you know righteous fire won't be as sustainable anymore but the footage shown early of the Shaper run, which is provided by my friend Tony, um, he actually ran it with level 1 purity of fire, and which simulates what your max resist will be after the nerf. So as you can see, it, the sustain during the Shaper fight is not a big problem at all. So if you can get Rise of the Phoenix in the new league, you should be able to sustain just fine. Um, so those are the choices. Uh, I would still highly recommend Rise of the Phoenix over any other shield you might possibly get. Um, now for the helmet and gloves, I want to talk about them together because this is the part where um, it involves essence crafting. So essence of horror uh, has, when used on a helmet, can give plus 30% more, more not increase more elemental damage to the socketed gem and since um, righteous fire is elemental it will get that increase 
So it's effectively make the for link into a pseudo file link, which is fantastic. Uh, Glove says something similar. It's called Essence of Delirium. And because Righteous Fire is damage over time, an Essence of Delirium on Gloves gives 30% more damage over time to the Socketed Gems. It has a similar effect then to the Essence of Horror on the helmet. So I, so I would recommend getting uh, either one of those uh, Essence Crafted Gloves or Helmet with those specific um, essences. Right, and uh, for chest and boots, uh, Calm's Heart and Calm's Root uh, are the best choices by far. There is no comparison. You need a lot of HP for the Righteous Fire to be amazingly tanky and to do a lot of damage. And there is really nothing else like it. But until you're able to afford that Calm's Heart and Calm's Root, I would recommend you get something with high HP roll and then just resist stats, whatever you need to fill out the build. Um, but as soon as you get one of those, definitely, definitely use that. Uh, helmet can also have helm enchants from the lab, but that's something you can worry about much later. It is more for maximizing it. And if the past leaks are any indication, the helmet enchants will be insanely overpriced. So it's something to leave to the last thing. Um, now for necklace and rings. Uh, for rings, you want to get opal rings, but until then you can just get any ring with high HP on it. And another thing you want is uh, for ring and necklaces, you want one damage of either cold or lightning, but not both. Uh, the reason is that the damage to attack, say plus 5 damage to cold, uh, plus 5 cold damage on attacks or plus 5 lightning damage to attacks while it will not get added to your righteous fire it will add be added to your shield charge and if your shield charge procs elemental equilibrium uh, what it does is that if you have cold damage it will increase uh, the da fire damage and lightning damage you deal to your enemy because it lowers the resist to those elements or if you have lightning damage added to the shield charge, it will also do the same thing for your fire damage and cold damage. So you want either cold damage or lightning damage on your rings or helmet in order to trigger something that's not fire. And since righteous fire does not hit and trigger elemental equilibrium, once your shield charge applies elemental equilibrium, it will stay and your enemy will just take more fire damage until he dies. Um, so that's fantastic. And for the belt, uh, you could just go for a leather belt with a lot of life. I mean, the, there are new belts coming out with Abyss gems, which would be potentially game changing. But since we don't have much information about that, um, I can only suggest leather belt. I will update the video. I will update the guide and everything to reflect changes once I have more info. So the important part about the gear is one, get as much life as possible on your gear. Uh, two, essence of horror for the helmet or essence of delirium for the gloves. Uh, three, um, get on your rings and necklaces. Try to get either cold damage to attack or lightning damage to attack, but never both. Now for the flask, unless something is changed in this league, which fire brew is going to be the best choice? And alongside that, ruby flask is going to be fantastic because it will give you fire resist. And when you have a lot of maximum fire resist, your natural region will overtake the degen of righteous fire, allowing you to heal really fast, effectively. Uh, basalt flask provides great mitigation, so does granite flask and sulfur flask as well. Consecrated ground provides more regen and gives damage. It's just really well rounded, uh, especially in the beginning of leagues. So on the flash, you also want to roll poison removal or curse removal. You want to roll shock removal. You want to write, uh, roll bleeding removal. Those are super important. Um, yeah, that's about it for the gear. For the jewels, you will want life uh maximum life resist those are 
super helpful uh, with life taking precedent over everything else. And also increased burning damage or increased fire damage will be the damage modifiers that you're looking for on the jewel. Now let's go over the skill tree. So starting out, we're not going to be able to reasonably run Righteous Fire right off the bat. So what we're going to do is level and farm with Sunder, uh, at least until you're able to afford Rise of the Phoenix uh, or other items that you need for the Righteous Fire build. But Rise of the Phoenix, and remember, while you're leveling, you should try to level at Purity of Fire while you edit. Um, because you're going to need that at a high level to provide that maximum uh, fire resist. So what you want to do is uh, start out here, uh, get some life nodes, go to the left, Warrior's Blood is a great regen node. Underneath in the path of building, I've typed in regen. This will highlight all the regen nodes you will need to hit uh, by the time you get ready to go to Righteous Fire. Uh, so now you take this and then you go all the way up to Born to Fight. Born to Fight is super efficient and you should take it as early as possible. And if you ever at any point during the tree you feel like you need more damage, go ahead and take some increased melee physical damage nodes just to increase the thunder, uh, thunder damage. It will also in just increase your output drastically. And instead of pathing here just go ahead and take the this node right here it's one of the more efficient nodes if you feel like you need that additional sunder damage so right away we're gonna work our way down here but because our final path is actually gonna go to the left if you can be a little patient just go to the left and just wind all the way down go to the right and yep at this point we're gonna go ahead and take some duelist area uh, clusters there's some efficient life nodes take all the way to art of gladiator and now depends on how you're sundering if you're two-handed sundering uh, go ahead and take these damage nodes uh, if you're dual wielding uh, definitely take these specific damage nodes uh, dual wielding would tend to be easier so that would be great and go ahead and take go right and take golden's blood this is a major life regen cluster that we're going to absolutely want in our build so go ahead and take that. You can go ahead and take the life behind it, or you can focus on damage first. Uh, at this point, the tree, you want to go to the left, go up, up and around. And this one gives you life regen, but it's also a fire damage node. It's not efficient until you do a lot of fire damage. And since we are thundering, that's not super important initially. Uh, we can take this cluster, however, because it is quite efficient. Uh, in terms of life and regen so and armor so earlier on that is going to help so might as well right uh, we go up and go ahead and take sanctuary and take discipline and training because it's just such a fantastic life no cluster cluster now we go right notice I'm passing a lot of jewel sockets so don't put any points in the jewel socket until you get the jewels put in them but if you do have access to them, then definitely go for it. Uh, we're gonna go down and take Constitution. At least we're eventually gonna fill up the wheel. wheel but uh, Constitution is really good early on. And we go up. And something to keep in mind: I mentioned Elemental Equilibrium early on. We're gonna eventually want to take this, but for now, definitely skip it until you get to Righteous Fire. Do not take this node. Um, go up and take this cluster of uh, really efficient regen nodes. That's going to help you. And at this point, uh, another cluster you really want to hit is to go up and hit elemental overload. But once again, this is something you only care about once you get to Righteous Fire. So another cluster you want is Holy Fire. This is a lot of burning damage. Uh, once again, while you're sundering, don't worry about it. So at this point, uh, we hit a lot of region nodes. Uh, we have enough skill point left over to do a lot of other things. This is only 40 levels worth of skill point. And now you can just focus on whatever nodes you need for Sunder, right? Preferably working towards life nodes because those are the ones you want to take eventually. Uh, go ahead and path towards Bloodless to give you more life as, you, as needed because you probably want it around this point. Uh, go ahead and put that put points into the damage nodes. Uh, dual wielding, sure. Go ahead and take Dervish. And if you see any 
let's say you're using axe go ahead and take all the axe nodes uh, you're gonna be spec out like I said but definitely do not be stingy with points early on uh, it's just gonna make you more efficient long term if you take damage nodes early um, yeah now fill in say you got a jewel go ahead and fill in a jewel socket and eventually just fill out uh, all the nodes that gives life regen arsonist has fire um, go ahead and take those and yeah it's looking good um, go ahead and take these region nodes and that jewel socket now we're at almost level 60 so if you have a rise of phoenix now you can begin considering going righteous fire if not keep going uh intelligence go up and go ahead and take this cluster it's just fantastic amount of damage uh, once you do have righteous fire you go down and take purity of flesh that's another big life nodes you can worry about and go ahead and test just take all the life nodes in the wheel this is just a super efficient cluster now that i'm going to compare it to the final build um you can take the juggernaut node so there's just plenty of efficient life nodes uh definitely you want barbarism uh by the time you get to righteous fire so right now with this many regen nodes we hit all the major ones uh, if you have Rise of the Phoenix, you if and you do Righteous Fire, you'll be able to sustain. And all right, now once you have everything filled out, your tree is going to look like this. Um, you're gonna get the jewels that you need for the socket, uh, the builds, and yeah, pretty much just like we did. Um, we hit just about every single region node. Uh, we took a point out of Born to Fight. We took the points out of all the Sunder nodes. For example, the Axe nodes I was uh, highlighting earlier and the Dual Will nodes I was highlighting earlier. So we undo everything Sunder related and we make sure to take Elemental Equilibrium and we make sure to take Elemental Overload. And yeah, that's pretty much what you need to do for a skill tree. I will post the separate um, the skill tree in stages uh, if I can once the uploaded version is up uh, so go ahead and check the comment for the most up-to-date uh, skill tree link and yeah I should cover the skill tree and as for the skill links um, there's righteous fire uh, for righteous fire conk effect elemental focus burning damage so this will either go into the helmet if you have say the 50, uh, 30 percent more elemental damage in the helmet or it will go into glove if you have 30 percent more damage over time on your glove so this is the setup righteous fire concentrated effect swapping for increased area effect elemental focus and burning damage support shield charge should be uh, supported but shield charge increased critical strike the reason increased critical strike is there is to proc the elemental overload more often um, faster attack for obvious reasons fortify is really helpful um, yeah and ball grace uh, empower and purity of fire so purity of fire can either go into a ring with a socket that has plus three to the gem or you should support it with an empower let's say you have a level 21 purity of fire supported by empower which will give you a level 23 purity of fire giving you one more maximum fire resist or you need a level 20 purity of fire and level four empower honestly i just recommend you try to get a level 21 purity of fire and the level three in power that should be more than enough and ball grace obviously helps you stay alive during a major fight so flame ability is something um that's helpful with blasphemy but remember we have witch fire brew as our flask and that gives vulnerability and depending on how that changes with this league we'll see um yeah the reason why this setup is running another curse is because it went all the way up and took the enemy can have one additional curse. 
So if you don't have enough to reach over there yet, then don't worry about additional curse at all. Go for Arctic Armor for additional survivability or anything else that you might want for your build. That part is really flexible and you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. So yeah, and more clusters you can talk about is uh, Elementalist. This is really nice once you have uh, Righteous Fire and that's pretty much it as far as this guy goes. Whew, that was... I need to catch my breath after all that. But yes, hopefully you find this guide helpful. Uh, I, a lot of you probably already played Righteous Fire before, but hopefully some of this information will be helpful. But I will try to, down below in the comment section, keep everything up to date if I can. And this will be the build I play in this league as well. So I will be learning things immediately. And if an item comes up that really helps this build, I will go ahead and put it in the comment down below. So you can check for that if you like. And if the enough major changes occur, I will do a whole new video with just going over the changes. For example, if an item is really good for the build, I will talk about it. If for some reason a change happens, make this build less or more vi viable, I will also talk about it. So yeah, oh, this is, I'm really tired. But yes, hopefully this helps some of you and yeah, if, as usual, I'm always happy to answer questions. In my past videos, plenty of people ask questions. There's like some videos with like 50 questions down below and it, you can probably check and I've tried my best to answer every single one of them. So if you have questions, please leave them down below and I will do my best to get to it. But you know, I work pretty hectic schedule, but I have this a week off to play Path of Exile and if I'm too devoted and I'm late to answering your questions, I apologize in advance. But anyways, I hope you all, uh, I wish you all good luck in the Abyss League. And whew, I, I know I need some RNG. So yeah, I hope you all get all the epic loot. And uh, yeah, this is that Yi guy with a Righteous Fire 3.1 guide. Whew, thank you so much for watching and I will see you 